Alright, so in this part of the video I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk you through the script and explain what happens. Um, the first part, of course, is index.php. That's the first file that loads, and so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. It's very simple. We uh, include the configuration and include our functions. Um, it's not really important at the moment. Um, and we include our JavaScript because these are the main components that, that make this work. Um, right here we have a function. It's in the functions file that scans the uh, source folder uh, for any video files. Now it's made, it will show, if you put multiple videos, it will show multiple videos um, in the list with a convert it button but the script is only set up at the time of writing this tutorial or creating this tutorial to process one single video and uh, I intend to change that later but for the sake of time I just went ahead and done this. You'll also notice here's the uh, default um, parameters that I wrote and you'll also see if you look at the bottom of this file I've got a couple other uh, different test cases there that I've used in the past that worked great and so you might try some of these they're hidden and commented out um, but anyway so this pretty much starts it now whenever you click the convert it button the next part that takes over is going to be our JavaScript which is right here in JS and it starts with our scripts we have a couple of uh, other libraries that we use. I use the timer and then the percentage loader which is really cool looking. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open with, I'm going to change that to uh, gedit. It's a text editor, editor there. It's default in uh, Ubuntu and I like to use it in Windows as well. So alright so we've got, um, let me see where does it start at? convert video that's what's uh, assigned to the the buttons you see right here whenever it's clicked um, it converts the video and passes that object and so the next part is when it converts the video it takes and gets the file name a file key it's a hash that's created and then the uh, parameters the uh, FFmpeg parameters it takes and makes a post to the post URL in case you're wondering where that's defined at we can look back over here on uh, in index.php and we have this uh, JS namespace global is what that actually is abbreviated for and you can see where it takes and echoes the post URL now it's a PHP constant that's defined in the config file and that's the way I pass uh, dynamic variables to uh, my JavaScripts. So anyways it grabs that, makes a uh, Ajax post to it, it, defines, it passes the file name, the F key, and then it specifies a type. The type is important. The convert type uh, triggers it to start processing the video. And now if we get a successful uh, reply it's going to start called the start polling uh, function and then passes the return data. If it doesn't, it'll alert us and say request failed. I've got to fix that to uh, render a bare error message as to why it failed. The next part, you see uh, start polling. It's got a bunch of different variables there that we're using. And basically, it, it starts the timer and then it sets the interval so what happens every uh, I guess every yeah one second there it's gonna poll and it's gonna actually call the function um, set progress hold on let me see poll status yeah the poll status is our is the function that actually makes the Ajax request and if all goes well, well, you know, it'll update the status. If not, you'll see this uh, alert says bad data um, because this return data was wrong. So we go ahead and go up here and look at poll status. Is that that? Yeah. It posts uh, the F key 
and the uh, type as status. And status requests, uh, since it's already started, it'll be a status update. And it'll say polling failed if that fails. Otherwise, it'll set the status data and then it'll return the status data. And pretty much it keeps looping until, of course, it we see if current time is less than total time. Once it reaches 100%, these will be equal, so it'll stop it at that point. As you can see, it stops the timer, clears the interval, so it'll quit polling, and then it alerts us that it has finished. And so that's pretty much it on the JavaScript end. Now on the PHP end, in case you're wondering what answers this uh, AJAX request, it all goes to process. Processes are uh, processes all of the uh, requests so it requires the config and functions and what this does this is checking our post variable I create a simple function to make this a lot easier and return a default value uh, right now I've got the out file hard-coded so you can only encode it once then you must delete the out file that will be changed uh, soon and then um, we have two different request types we check make sure that it's either converter status or else we return a uh, error message um, then we check we just do some extra error checking you can look through that yourself and then once it passes all the error checks we go ahead and we're going to start with uh, our ffmpeg convert class it's a PHP class I wrote to uh, kind of help process the uh, request and doing logging and stuff and so if it's convert we're going to go ahead and call on the execute method and we're going to pass it the in file the out file the parameters and the f key and now we we put the sleep for two seconds the reason being is ffmpeg takes a second or two i guess to uh actually start converting the file so if we don't have this here what will happen is it'll call this function too early and then the file that it needs to to check the status on it won't be there and it'll return an error and we don't want that so I found by putting about a two second delay in there it works great and I don't get that now if you see also if it's doing a polling re, uh, polling for a status update it only calls this method and so uh, this is just in case some wild crazy reason it reaches there it shouldn't and so the next part we're gonna we can take a look at if we're following the, the trail then we're gonna go ahead and look at our ffmpeg convert class it's actually located in our functions file and uh, these are some functions there like the uh, source files it gets uh, for scanning the directory for files there's our JSON response function that I love to use for uh, handling responses to uh, AJAX requests. The check valve function, uh, seconds to minutes, and then our FFmpeg convert class. So we go down here and we look, and we have we have our execute, and you can see there's four parameters, or I mean three parameters. Huh, I'm passing it a fourth one, aren't I? I? Need to fix that. Anyways, it goes through here. Make sure that we've got an F key. Uh, F key is just a file key to uniquely identify each file, since it is a hash. Um, string length. Make sure that our FFmpeg path is set. If not, we we'll return a nice, pretty little mess error message. Log the errors. Then we'll go ahead and write a status file. Um, the status file just comes to let us know uh, where the script is at. In case some reason or other it doesn't work, we can kind of go back and trace the steps. And now we go ahead and make our uh, command, the actual ffmpeg command. Um, I do write that to the uh, status file. So if you ever want to, if you're having a problem there and you can't get the uh, ffmpeg command to work, might take a look at the uh, status file. I'll show you real quick. Take a look at the status file and then you can see uh, oh, where does it start at? Executing command. Here it is. 
and then you'll have to find the uh, the tail end of it. Um, gosh, there's so much of it. Okay, ah, okay, all the way up to here. So basically, you can take and copy this, and then you can run this from the command line. And a lot of times, that'd be more intuitive, like uh, to run that that command there and see what what it outputs. And that's how a lot of times I debug my ffmpeg uh, command before using it on a script like this, because I couldn't really figure out a good way to return. Uh, an error status right now for if ffmpeg uh, command fails so yeah anyway so it does write the command to the to the log so you can debug with that then it's gonna go ahead and build the uh, build the parameters and then it's gonna post you never know this happens this happens behind the scenes it posts to the execute URL which just so happens to be uh oh, whoops our ffmpeg execute file and this is the this is pretty much the final stage where you're walking through through the chain of things it's going to go ahead and, and check make sure that all the uh, parameters are set um, initiate our ffmpeg class then we're going to do a couple of error checks make sure that the data posted is valid. Um, one of the biggest ones there is this uh, password. Make sure nobody's trying to cheat and post data that's not valid. Um, but then, and then the last part is we see it uh, writes a status saying that it's executing that command, and that's just before it actually executes the ffmpeg command. So, like I said, in the process of debugging, this is where if it fails and you've gotten this far in the error log or your status log you can go ahead and look and know that obviously the command failed uh, and at that point FFmpeg just starts writing to the log and and then it just pulls back and forth and the main thing that, that grabs it from the log we've got a uh, look at the JSON status there um, it's got Get in, uh, get encoded time and get total time, and all these two. These are two uh, methods there that call another method, uh, par parse log time. The parse log time opens up that status log, and then it splits it up, divides all of our time up, and then uh, calculates the time in seconds, and then it just simply returns the uh, the total amount of seconds that has elapsed, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell that's kinda how it works and uh, I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial thanks for watching